Welcome back everyone, Zeke Morgan here for episode 2 in this Let's Play series of Fury. If you haven't seen the previous episode in this walkthrough, in this Let's Play, I have left it as a playlist on my channel. And as always, if you enjoy this video, please don't hesitate to leave a like, comment, share and subscribe for more awesome videos. So this is just um, a quick sort of recap, a little bit of an introduction to the second boss in the Fury game, uh, aptly known as the Strap. And we're going to jump straight into it there, um, getting in a nice little bit of a combo for it. Um, I don't know the best way to describe this boss, sort of, um, we were hearing from our sort of deranged rabbit friend that uh, this is a person that's been captured, being put in a prison within a prison. Um, and basically used to destroy the walls to try and get out, uh, but they actually do uh, regenerate and come back after. As you can see, a lot different from the first boss that we encountered, uh, aptly known as the Chain. Um, they were more sort of melee focused there with a little bit of um, sort of... Oh my god, my mind's gone completely blank on it. Distance fighting, sort of shooting. Uh, the strap is more sort of in your face, um, especially at this sort of first stage of it, more in your face, more melee, uh, relying on a little bit of those sort of um, firearms attacks just to keep you off then. Um, at the minute it's doing a nice job of uh, dodging most of my attacks, but utilizing that nice little counter then, obviously regaining a little bit of the health and going straight at it again then. Now on its second phase it's going to release these purple balls uh, for it. These are sort of um, heat seeker balls for want of a better word there. Um, as soon as they explode they will come towards you. And I don't know if everyone saw that but when I stepped on that pad then sort of in the middle of the particular area then um, the enemy the strap was actually uh, attracted to it and we'll begin investigating that um, obviously that can be utilized to your advantage there uh, unfortunately what I don't tend to do in this video um, or even in, in the previous fights that I've had is utilize the charge attack but um, that is one of the sort of easiest things that you can do utilize uh, the temporarily moment that the enemy is focused on those squares get sort of a charged attack on them and that will take down their health quite nicely See at the minute, it's utilizing the lasers, the uh, sort of unobstructed or indestructible balls there, as well as all of its uh, quite nice firearms attacks there. I mean, it is a little bit quicker than the first enemy that we've seen, so obviously they are going to get progressively harder as we carry on, but getting to know their patterns, uh, the noise that they make and the attacks that they do is quite helpful. As you can see at the minute, and um, you've got to try and let it do its combo first and then quickly dash around it and get in a combo of your own. Otherwise, it's just going to dodge you all the time. Now when we're at its sort of third stage, we've got its life bar down by two, it is going to have more sort of powerful melee attacks. Now I've got that scythe, or the scythe. Uh, depending on how you say it, that's coming out again with its firearms attacks now as well and a sort of pink um, or pinkish homing ball then. The best way to do that is try and dodge the homing ball as much as possible and put one of those centralized pillars between you and it. Most of the time it does take it down. Again it is going to do those large beam attacks as well so just keep um, dodging that as well and as you can see successfully made use of one of those pillars to dodge it. I don't know why I sort of dodged into the homing beam the second time that was a bit silly of me and missing that first sort of counter which wasn't the best. Again, again it's so close now to the door stage and oof, luckily dodging that as well. I'm trying to sort of stay out of its melee range because I know just one sort of hit from it I'm going to go down. Again, I'm trying my best there to sort of dodge around the pillar and get the homing ball into it. But unfortunately it does KO me there so it's going to use up a full one of my lives there as well. The first time on this recording and on this Let's Play and Walkthrough of Fury. Again, I am playing this on Fury difficulty which is basically the normal mode of this game. You have a Fury... 
uh, the lowest difficulty is Promenade, I think it is. That doesn't unlock trophies, uh, the enemies are a little bit easier, you have more health. And then uh, after you complete the game, I believe you unlock a Furia difficulty, or hopefully I said that right. It's basically a hard difficulty where enemies will dodge a lot more and um, have more powerful attacks. Everything like that. Urgency, trying to utilize these uh, the squares at the center of the arena as much as possible. We've still got one more there and they're getting attracted to it so I'm just gonna use the standard four hit combo there and get in there with the stun attack as well. Most of the time when you do instigate that combo as they're getting up they will uh, normally instigate a error of attack if it is in this dual stage or if it's outside of this sort of uh, dual uh, dual stage uh, they will normally instigate some kind of sort of firearm related attack then ranged attack i probably should say they're not really shooting firearms at us they're more shooting lasers and balls of light and everything but again what you want to try and do is just dash uh, around the area then keep it entertained as you can see there i actually managed to get a few firearm shots and i can say firearm because uh, your character, the stranger, does actually use a firearm. But for some reason, I don't know why I'm dashing away from these. Um, obviously, you can sort of use your uh, dash functionality to get through them with no damage sustained. Uh, the, the last sort of shockwave they do send through the ground then, um, I found the easiest way for myself to get through them, as I haven't quite mastered the dashing just yet. It's normal if you can get them to really sit when they're at the top of the screen. If you resort sort of down to the bottom of the screen then, um, obviously you're not going to know exactly where you are because the camera doesn't track that nicely across it, but some of the time the shockwave will actually um, end just before, as you can see just happened then, which was very lucky because if I went back any further then I'd be falling off the edge. Okay, and we've got it so close now to get down, but going to try and get it in the door stage, the one-on-one -on -one close stage there. Hit me the first time but I managed to parry the second then and parry the third and it's going to unleash a lot a more powerful attack. Then most of the time if you do get a perfect parry then uh, it will unleash a more devastating attack on it uh, better than any sort of uh, combo that you have. And of course don't be scared when it's going for an attack to use dash in the dual stages, you can avoid most of their standard normal attacks. And as you can see now, um, the strap is going to get uh, a little bit annoyed with me now. And in this particular area, what you want to do now is basically just uh, make your way around the area. It will attack you at a random stage. I wasn't exactly too sure where it's going to come from this time. And it is quite quick. It will normally try and grab you. And what you want to try and do, and I don't quite manage to succeed in this particular stage, is basically when it comes up with that, uh, basically tilt the analog sticks there as fast as you can there. Um, just with your, with your thumbs, just toggle them in opposite directions. Normally it does help. And of course, with those purple beams, or oh, purple balls, of course, you can shoot them before they break up into the smaller ones, and that can help, obviously, uh, stop a load of them tracking you. Uh, through to my stupidity then, I thought I was fully behind that pillar, but ended up taking a full one of those main lasers to the face, which obviously isn't going to help my uh, situation that much. And again, these are indestructible orbs, but most of the time, you can successfully dodge your way through them. For some reason, I don't know why it's attacking the pillar then. I don't know if that's sort of on certain pillars or because of the way I attacked it. I honestly do not know at this particular stage. Uh, my main focus is trying to get round to it. Of course, you've still got all your same attacks as well. You've still got the charged attacks if you want to. And at that particular stage, I did try and dodge past the shockwave, but unfortunately didn't quite judge it as well as I probably should have. Um, end up dodging into it. So the second KO in this series, hopefully there won't be that many more of that. Of course, when you can't see the enemy, um, as I'm having real trouble trying to get it, trying to entice it to attack me now, um, obviously the squares at the center of the field won't sort of work. You won't be able to immediately find it by stepping on one of those. And again, it's going to come straight for me and get those analog sticks rumbling that particular stage I didn't manage to quite get it 
Um, as I said, this is only the second boss that you fight, and it is a bit fiddly uh, to do if you're not entirely sure how to do it. Of course, when the enemy does glow that sort of orangey color, color don't try and attack it, because pretty much they're in an invincibil in invulnerable state there, sort of invincibility there. Obviously, Fury does lend itself quite nicely to being slightly a little bit harder than the traditional action hack and slashes uh, that you would like. And there is an awful lot of emphasis, um, especially with this boss, uh, with successful parries, rather than pulling off flashy combos, which is quite nice then. It hasn't gone down the traditional route um, as other sort of typical hack and slash games. Again, we are coming quite close there to forcing it into another dual stage and of course when it does unleash the balls keep an eye out for the pale green ones normally you can shoot those and release some kind of health orb so if you are running low on health always be sure to keep an eye out for those and you'll be stuck quite nicely now that's attack I, i'm not really too sure how it got uh, for it then or even how i didn't manage to dodge it the first time but no, just keep an eye out for it. You do hear a distinct noise when they try and attack you in these particular modes. Um, so if you are very lucky and time it nicely, um, you can pretty much dodge them without paying too much attention to what's happening on the screen. And of course, when you do um, get down all the life bar, you will uh, really get back all the KOs that you've done. So it's not exactly that bad that you have to go through the whole fight with just three KOs. Um, and now we're on its final stage now, um, what it's going to do is it's going to uh, unleash the charge balls and pretty much a huge swath of um, laser balls there that you've got to obviously try and dodge. Or just do what I'm doing at the minute, it's just shooting through them. Obviously most of the time you can put enough distance between you and them and pretty much take care of some of the balls there. But you just got hit as it went into a tiny bit of a... Uh, for want of a better word, cinematic then, which isn't going to be quite helpful. And then with this laser, it is a wide sweeping attack then. Don't try and melee the boss at this particular stage. What you want to try and do is use your dodge, because um, you're invulnerable while you do it at a certain stage, and basically just dodge between those. As you can see, each of the hits do take down quite a bit of the health bar there, so you've got to be really careful with that. Um, this is the third KO now, um, not that I'm keeping score or anything like that, um, I honestly thought I, I wouldn't have that much trouble with this boss, um, hopefully trying to keep up my perfect record as we did with the first boss, the chain, but unfortunately this isn't the case. Um, hopefully we do get it this time there, I don't particularly want to be going down for a fourth time, um, especially on sort of the normal difficulty, but I'm sure these things will happen especially with bosses such as this. I'm still getting used to this, this is obviously the first time I'm playing through this as well, so you're pretty much seeing things how I am as well. So again, just utilising those dodges, as I've said, timing it correctly, I timed it right the first time, not in the second, uh, just dodge it, basically it will sweep backwards and forwards faster and faster. Again, I'm not doing a very good job of dodging it as it goes around. But as soon as it's finished, basically pop some shots into the enemy, keep your distance as much as possible, and force it into uh, what normally would be the dual stance. And now what you want to do is don't try and attack the enemy at this particular stage, just dodge all its area of attacks. These are quite easy, just stay out the red coned areas, get back when it does that. And theoretically, if I would have dodged that, that would have been quite helpful. But again, it's going to launch itself into a melee then. Uh, try and get as much distance between us and them as it can. We're going to have to do this uh, again there.
So it managed to go through, um, again, all its ranged attacks there and actually managed to dodge most of those lasers that it was spawning at us quite nicely. Obviously, third time it is a charm, as they say. So again, I'm not heeding my own warning here. I'm trying to attack this enemy where you really shouldn't. Again, keeping it out of its area, area attacks and dodging. Unfortunately, I misjudged the dodge there and actually went into it as it came past. But with that, that is the end of the second boss, the strap. It seems like it's pushing us back quite nicely towards the pit, but in typical Fury fashion, there's another boss down. And again, we're going to have a, another frequent visit from our rabbit-headed who, friend, who I believe is maybe a delusion of ourselves. And we're going to make our way quite nicely over to the third boss, which you'll see in the next episode of this Let's Play series of Fury. And that's going to be the line. Uh, that is his name. Um, what we're just going to do is just make our way nicely for it. And I did find out something quite intriguing at this particular stage. You don't actually have to walk to each particular area then. Um, if you just hit X on the PlayStation 4 controller, it will actually walk the character for you. If you're feeling a little bit lazy there, or if you want to pop off while it's doing this, say, grab a cup of tea or something, and you can just quite nicely do it there. But at this particular stage, my hands aren't on the controller or anything. But again, with the... well, at that stage it is. Let's just have a little bit of fun there, seeing what I could do. Um, but again, just tap X. You only need to tap it once, I believe. And it will just walk you through the path there. See, it does appear that, as I said in the first episode, we are sort of coming down in the sort of levels of these bosses as well. Um, and I did a little bit of research uh, after the first episode then. It does appear that there's nine enemies in this game. And they're called the Chain, the Strap, as you've just seen us defeat. The Line, the Scowl, the Hand, the Song, the Burst, the Edge, and the Beat. The tenth additional boss that you can choose to fight based on the one or two endings of the game which is called the star obviously i don't know which ending we're going to go for i've tried to keep it relatively spoiler free so i haven't looked sort of any further than this particular boss there we just attacked the strap um but obviously i will be doing videos off all of those so please feel free to check those out and of course just meandering our way there. I've got to love the artwork of Fury as well then. It is quite engaging and the combat is quite fun, if not a little bit tricky and fiddly. Isn't a whole lot of sort of uh, exposition tutorials at the start. Obviously it explains the buttons just a little bit um, for you and sort of uh, drops you in it. It's quite challenging but for sort of all the right reasons there as well. I have to say uh, with two bosses now underneath my belt. I'm quite excited for this and quite happy that we can do it. And we must be surely coming up onto the boss as we speak. And um, with these little interludes on our way there, it does tell you a little bit of information about the boss that we're going to be fighting now. So the next one's going to be sort of a master of time there. As I don't know what necessarily to expect, maybe he can slow down things or maybe rewind things, I'm not entirely sure. But we see a doom over in the distance and I believe that is where we are headed. Just going to meander and make our way there. Try to play it cool. Easy for him. He chose to be here. But we are definitely not cool with this. We are getting out of here. his 
path, my friend. The jailer is the key. So we are, here we are, the meeting with the third boss, the line there. So Izinaya's own little plastic bubble, like that film, the boy in a plastic bubble, are actually called the strangers. So that's quite intriguing, quite self-eluding there. Hmm, and he's got levitation as well. That's pretty cool. Very zen of him to say. Everything got stilled. You made the picture stop. I'm here to make my clocks tick again. Okay, sounds a bit ominous, so we're gonna get ready for the fight, as I said, outlined this next episode of Fury. And of course, once again, if you enjoyed this video, please don't hesitate to leave a like comment, share and subscribe and as always I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day and stay tuned for more Fury videos.